I'm going to change the tone slightly today. I'm not going to be talking about quantum computing or gamma technology or the latest innovations around cloud computing. I'm going to talk more about leadership uh, and how I see the role of the CIO changing. And, and I'm probably going to refer quite a bit back to my existing organization, Pumpkin Patch, and how we see the CIO um, interacting with not only myself, but also the executive team and some of the things that we focus on. Uh, I recently read some, some Gartner research. It was probably a survey. And there was one area that I found particularly interesting. Um, and where is the clicker? Sorry, guys. Um, I found it incredibly interesting. The first part of that was there were 40% of CIOs, sorry, CEOs, who felt that, sorry, the CEOs that were interviewed felt that 40% of their CIOs were going to be in a different organization within 12 months. That's quite scary. Now, you've got to take that with a pinch of salt because it did come from the CEO. But for them to think that 40% of CIO is going to work for someone else in 12 months is quite scary, in, in my opinion. However, there is some hope. They did feel that 18% um, of those interviewed, that 18% of the CIOs, were actually going to be doing another role within their organisation. So there is hope. So there is 20% of those people that are going to work in the organisation still. But the most interesting comment of all was about succession planning. And less than half a percent of those interviewed felt that the CIO had the potential to become the CEO of the organization. So if you take the context of 400 odd people in this room, there's two of you that have the potential to become the CEO, and I think that's quite scary. And, and quite an indictment on, on how CIOs have been perceived in organizations and the status that they have around the executive table. And I think it's time for change. And if you look at my existing organization, Pumpkin Patch, I'll just give you some background. Over the last 10 years, we've transformed ourselves to be a truly global organization. So we operate in 22 countries. We obviously, we design children's wear, and we export our IP, but we have a massive infrastructure to support that organization. In 1995, very little of our revenue was actually generated outside of New Zealand. Most of it was generated within New Zealand. Today, 80% of our revenue is generated outside of New Zealand. So that's a massive shift for us as an organization. Um, and we will continue and will continue to grow our business outside of New Zealand. We see our future opportunities and our growth coming outside of the borders of New Zealand. Hence the relationship with Amazon and our ability or our desire strategically to become more of a multi-channel retailer, grow our online presence, but at the same time support our existing infrastructure with a wholesale franchise network around the world which means we need to remain connected, and there's all sorts of opportunities around that. I think the, the time now, more than ever, is ready for us to start to use technology to enable us to grow our business. So if you look at our existing snapshot, we have retail stores, obviously, in New Zealand, Australia. We still have three stores in Ireland. Um, maybe a little later I'll get, some, get a chance to talk to you about what happened between the UK and the US, where we actually closed our retail stores. Um, however, we've got over 200 stores in those markets. We have direct and wholesale partnerships, as I said, in 22 countries around the world. We have our existing websites, five websites that we, domains that we actually manage and service from New Zealand, and two for Charlie and Me, which is our, our new brand that we're launching, or we have just launched um, internationally. We have over 2,200 employees, and we have four brands, the main two of those being um, Charlie and Me, which is the new one, and obviously the existing Pumpkin Patch, which we all know has been around for 20 years and is a little iconic. Um, we've had our challenges, but that brand is very, very strong. If you look at technology within Pumpkin Patch, a quick snapshot of our business, we have, um, we have a centralised model. Um, all our systems are housed at, at, at head office, so our warehouses and our stores, all the information comes back via VPN connections to our head office. We have 26 IT staff, and that's a combination of project managers, analysts, developers, engineers, and application specialists, obviously to manage all the different networks that we have. We have 800 desktop PCs around the world that all need to be maintained um, and looked after. And we currently have about 13 terabytes of data, tier one data, that we actually manage and have to control within our organization. We process over 200,000 transactions every day, be it from store, be it online, or be it through um, our, our inventory management process. So 
So IT at Pumpkin Patch touches all parts of our organisation. Its tentacles are spread across all our departments. So for instance, if we look at our, our warehouse systems, and I'll quickly run through these. We have an inventory management system, we have a fair where we have a put to light, we have wireless scanners, um, we have wireless pick lists. Our retail systems include our POS systems, our multi-channel capabilities. We've just introduced our new click and collect component to, to our, um, our CRM system, which is our customer database system. Our design systems, we have a product lifecycle um, system and process that's around that. Our supply chain requires uh, connectivity to our warehouses in China, um, and uh, we, where we do our initials, we pick and pack in China, distribute to stores. Um, the purchase or deliveries need to interact with, with those warehouses uh, and our head office. Uh, our finance system just been upgraded to, to, to AX. Our purchasing systems is an AX purchase system that we just introduced. Wholesale orders is an AX solution that allows us to take orders from our suppliers and then process it right through to invoicing. And again, 22 countries, different terms of trade. It's very important that those systems work. From a direct perspective, we have those e-commerce sites I just referred to. We have social media integration that we're starting to integrate back into our, into our websites. Direct marketing, uh, we use, we use um, List Manager to segment our database. And we have over 2,000 active VIPs just in Australia and New Zealand, 2 million VIPs in Australia and New Zealand that we actively work with. And we have four, 4 million customers worldwide on our database that we try and activate. And obviously we try and segment that and target some of our, our activity. Pricing promotions is a, an internally written system that allows us to manage our pricing model. Again, we need to manage our global pricing model to ensure we don't have uh, what happened with the All Blacks jumper in terms of pricing. Because we own our own brand, we have the ability to actually manage that pricing model internationally. Obviously, we can't um, get away from the fluctuations around currency, but we make sure that we have a band within our pricing around the world. Um, so the bottom line is, with the reach of IT in our organisation, the CIO role, in my opinion, has changed dramatically. And it's changed more from a tactical role and keeping the lights on and keeping the systems running to be more of a strategic partner across the, bits, across the business. So my CEO sits on the executive table and has an equal voice to every single one of my other executives, be it the CFO, be it my chief operating officer, or any one of my other executives. I think it's critically important. If you look at the reach the CIO has across my organisation, if that person is not fully integrated with my executive team, there's going to be breakdowns and we're going to be in trouble. And a lot of the work that is done by um, the CIO is actually um, initiated in, in that area in the IT department to support our strategies. So if you look at um, what's happened with us, you know, and again, this is probably relative to a lot of organisations where, where technology has traditionally been an enabler. People have said we wanted this, this and this. So the IT guys go away, they go back to their bunker. What do they do? They come up with a solution. The people who don't actually know how it all puts together say, yep, sounds good, go out and make it happen. I think that's changed. Well, I know it's changed. Certainly from our perspective, it's changed. Because of that reach of, 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 of the IT team, the, the CIO is a very key member. And as I said, the responsibilities of the CIO are not only about technology, they're also about business responsibilities. So if you're going to have a voice and you're going to sit at the exec table, you need to have an understanding of the whole business. And your responsibility is as an exec team, if the business is not performing how it should perform, the responsibility of that whole exec team, which now includes the CAO, is important. So you need to have an understanding of the organisation so that you can have a voice around other things other than just the traditional IT components of the role. As I said, IT has changed um, from simply being a technology resource to being a key role in the business decision making process. And, and as I said, IT, is not only sh IT departments are today shaped by business requirements, not only technology. And that is also a shift that I think is, is happening. And lastly, the demands of the CAO and the wider IT team have consequently changed as a result of that. So let's talk about the topics that I was asked to speak about today. So that's, that's the intro. What are CEOs expecting of the CEOs on their agenda? And I'll go through that in a bit more detail. Is technology meeting the expectations of the CEO by driving business process and performance? I'll, I'll give you a perspective on that. And where should the CIO's business and technology priorities lie? Um, again, I'll give you some perspective on that. But lastly, this is a key part. Is there a particular skill set 
that the CEOs need today to better get a response from their CEO. And I'm probably going to spend a bit of time on that a bit later because I think that's where the big change is starting to come and starting to evolve uh, to become business leaders. So as the CIO needs to become more of a leader, I think there's a skill set outside of technology. So let's assume that, that your, your technology knowledge is sound and not questionable. I think it's the other skills, the ancillary skills that are required to become a true business leader that I'm going to focus on a bit later. So let's start with the first point. You know, the, the, the CIO's agenda, what should be on that agenda? And from my perspective, more strategy. So strategic items that deliver or assist the, the CEO's strategic plan. Remembering if you're part of the exec team, it's not the CEO's plan, it's the business plan. And you're part of that. So you need to be over um, the strategy and how the business actually developed that strategy and performed that strategy. So let's talk about, in our perspective, click and collect was a, was a strategy that we agreed to, to, to work on in January of this year as a team, which was the next ev evolution from our websites. The IT team went away, worked on it, and came back, we were able to deliver a, a plan or deliver a solution that supported that company strategy very simply and very easily. The second thing is I expect my uh, CIO to become more innovative. Um, and in some cases, they need to lead that innovation. There's a natural bent from a, from a, um, a CIO, or they have the natural skill set to be innovative. They are aware of new technologies. They're aware of what's happening. They're aware of what's coming. There's a natural tendency. So how do I take that tendency or that innovation and actually transform it across the organization, especially through my executive team? And that's a key. So that's where I see they can really play a massive role. And lastly, business process. Business process is very, very important. Um, and it's not always technology-based. And I think IT people have an inherent uh, project management capability, and it's how do we take that from the bunker and transfer it across the organisation. So I think process is important, and they have that natural ability to question. Sometimes you get the gung-ho chief operating officer who wants to do this and we'll do it tomorrow, and let's just go and do it. Sometimes that needs to be moderated by people who understand process, who understand project management, and understand how everything clicks together. And I think that's a role that the CIO can play and certainly plays in my organisation. You know, and then, of course, there's the, there's the normal base technology um, that the business has. The CEO, I don't really want to know about systems being down or what's wrong and you know, the software upgrades. That's all part of what they do, and I think that's just what you do every day, and that's just got to keep going. Don't come and tell me that the website's been down for six hours and all of that. I think my expectation is that you guys just make that happen. You just fix it. You just make sure it's operating and it's op at its optimum level. So I think that's just the normal stuff and the licensing and the upgrades just need to happen. You know, that's not something that I expect my CAO to bring to the exec table because that's just what they're responsible for. That's what they get paid to do. Is technology meeting um, my CEO or my expectations? There's two areas as a CEO that I that I clearly have an expectation of, and that is to aid growth and to ultimately reduce costs. Sounds simple, but if you look at it from a strategic perspective, I think there is an emerging requirement from a, for a CIO to be more strategic and be around the table and to think about strategy and how that impacts the business. Innovation, I've just spoken about that. I think that's also an emerging requirement around the table. I think project and portfolio delivery, as I said, I think you guys do it really well. It's your inherent, it's your inherent capability, and just got to keep doing that. And um, the second part is around costs. You know, um, cost containment, I think you need to respond. I think the environment we're in right now, it's very easy for a CEO to come along and say, I want to cut that, cut that, cut that. I think it's your responsibility as a CAO to say, hold on. The consequences of this and this and this is that, that and that. And I think it's very important because ultimately, when it fails, it's going to be your issue. So you need to be able to very clearly articulate what cost cutting actually means. So that's when I start to talk about the innovation part because that's about productivity and efficiency, sweating your existing assets, doing things differently. And I think that's very important. And that's why I think that innovation is an emerging requirement around the skill set of the, of the CIO. And as I said, project and portfolio delivery is just an historical strength. And remember, you must also be able to support the new technologies that are coming along. And that is important. And I think 
In reality, that part that, I, that I'm going to refer to, and you see it just down the line there, the discipline around new technologies is critical. You know, everybody wants the latest whiz-bang whiz -bang application. It's sexy, it's new, they want this, this, and this. It's how do you evaluate that and bring it back to reality, and how do you align that with the company strategy? Because I know there's an executive that'll be knocking on the door every day saying, I want this upgrade, I want this, I want this capability. You need to clearly be able to evaluate that in the context of the company strategy. So in reality, I don't believe IT departments are operating in the strategic space. I think they need to. Now, I'm not necessarily directing that towards you guys. That's also towards CEOs, and I think CEOs need to understand the value that CIOs can play in the company strategy and the execution thereof. So that goes both ways. Project delivery we've spoken about. Cost, cost containment, I think, is key. Find the savings, work smarter, be innovative. I've spoken about the, um, the new technologies. And lastly, is that systems. Your systems need to, sorry, your systems need to keep working. And if they aren't working, the above doesn't really matter, does it? So that's just, as I said, a given. If you just look at, from a pumpkin patch perspective, um, there's a couple of examples that I can talk about. So if you talk about online, we've been in the e-commerce space for 10 years. Prior to that, we were doing catalogs 20 years ago. So I think we've evolved into a true online retail. We understand the concept of dealing with a customer that's not face-to-face. -face. We understand about fulfillment. We understand supply chain. However, I think things have moved. In five years ago, you would have created a website, delivered it to the business, and you probably would have walked away. I think that's all changed. Right now, from our perspective, it's not just a website anymore. There's, there's content management. There's stock status. As websites become transactional, there's content management. Um, there's order processing. I've got warehouses around the world that I've got to make sure my stock meets the demands of what their content is on that, on that website. Um, social media, you know, the links from social media um, onto our website are critical. We're evolving the look and feel. We're starting to have interactive um, videos. We're starting to have fashion shows. We're starting to have likes, so the ability to, to segment data about if someone buys this, are they going to buy that? All of these things are starting to mean that the website is not finished and delivered. It's actually just the beginning of what's going to happen with your existing e-commerce strategy. It's just going to keep evolving and evolving and evolving. And the only people, the people that can deal with that or deal with all of that noise is the IT team. I spoke about click and collect, um, and this is a, another strategic initiative that we, we, we agreed to as a team, we worked on, and I must say, the IT team within six months were able to take the concept or the strategy of click and collect and actually deliver a model, and we've rolled that out to all of our Auckland stores in, in, in the coming month, we had a trial, so within six months we went from nothing to a click and collect strategy that is working really, really well. We found there's all sorts of issues, all sorts of opportunities around click and collect. Um, so we're, again, you're talking about what does that mean? So it's about taking your website, converting that into a click and collect. Straight away, you've got supply chain challenges. You've got process changes in store. So all of that needed to be managed by the IT team. And within six months, my team was able to deliver that system and now it's operational and functional, and we will have that across our Australian stores by Christmas as well. And we think that is going to drive value. So that's taking an existing base system and creating value out of that, and turning an existing infrastructure and creating value, just by introducing process and systems and just doing things slightly differently. And then you've got social media. I mean, this is a minefield. You know, um, from a CEO perspective, the IT guys need to be, need to be the, the thought leaders in this space because as a CEO and a retailer, I find it incredibly difficult that you have an industry that has been focused on, um, on disciplines and controls to make money. All of a sudden, you've got this, 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 this medium out there that you've got no control of. And, you know, and it's all about customers just using it and just providing information. Now, the CIO is the moderator needs to be able to use those those uh, digital natives, those early youngsters in their organisation and start to get us as traditional retailers to understand what does this mean and how do we leverage this. And I think we've done that really, really well from a social media perspective. Where should the business and technology priorities lie? And again, I'm not going to go through this in too much detail, but again, it's the key things. Innovation, it's about RP-based systems that add value, so that's where the innovation component comes in. 
Cash returns, I've just spoken about that. You know, those systems of record are great. Getting all your transactions, getting all your data, how do we leverage that? And click and collect is just a classic example where we took an existing system and we were able to leverage it. Productivity, um, focus on solutions that enhance productivity and allow you to leverage your existing infrastructure, critical. And then new technologies. New technologies are changing the way people manage in the organization. We have a, all of the execs have iPads, all have iPhones, and there's a bit of a challenge. People will send links to websites they've seen around the world about, look at this, look at that, what do you think about this? There's a bit of a challenge. Who can find the latest, greatest new innovation? And I think that's great, because that's not happening at the IT level, that's actually happening at the exec level. The IT teams are dealing with all of that, but they're actually enhancing the capability around um, the IT team. So the technology ownership is starting to grow outside of the IT. So if you talk about cloud computing, you talk about, you know, if anyone who's got an iPhone understands the concept, you know, anyone who understands Apple understands all those concepts, those technologies are now moving out of the IT. So there's a capability starting to build around the exec team that's quite important that starts to change their thinking around how we approach certain challenges. And as I said, ownership is growing within other areas of the business and the CEO needs to engage the business. And I've got a short video that, um, that I'm gonna play you and this was from our marketing, I went to a marketing presentation about a month ago and asked the guys if I could use it because it certainly shows um, what's happening and the pace of change and from a, from a marketing perspective and, and technology and what's that, what that's doing. I mean, it's, it's hard to realize that, you know, to even fathom that 10 years ago, Facebook didn't exist. You know, 15 years ago, um, we had no Google. I mean, what would we do without those two today? Um, so the pace of change is absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, and I guess this does highlight it. Some of you might have already seen it, not sure.
the new normal, I mean, I guess that does highlight, whilst it is a marketing video, it, it highlights the pace of change over the last sort of decade, and I think it's only going to get quicker. You know, as a retailer, there's retailers out there who will say, gee, times are tough. And it's almost revolutionary right now. I think it's an exciting time to be a retailer. Because if you're not embracing this, and I think we are, and if you're not embracing these changes, you're going to get left behind. You're going to be, you're going to be dead. Those, those brands that have been at the forefront of retail for the last sort of 10 or 20 years aren't going to be around. So we've embraced it as a business, and multi-channel is, is a key strategy of ours. You know, ultimately, we don't care if a customer's shopping with a wholesale partner in Kuwait, a franchise partner in Mexico, uh, online from Kuvapedi, or shopping at the pumpkin batch store in Invercargill, it's ultimately they're a customer and they will decide how and when they want to shop. So I think technology is creating this revolution and, um, and I'm, I'm excited being, uh, being in retail because I think the space is, is just ready for, for the smart retailers to really get into it and, and, and have some fun and, and again, re evolve and, and revolutionise their business. Someone said to me, when last did you see change? I said, well, if you go back to when the old POS system, the old tool that IBM developed and they turned that into a POS, that was the last time retail has had such massive change because we went from taking money to gathering data. And I think from then to now, there hasn't been a lot of change. It's evolved. We're now at this space where there's this exponential lift. And from a retail perspective, I think it's exciting. Um, lastly, let me just quickly go through what I think are the competency sets for change. And I think as a CIO, let, I'm assuming that your technical skills are sound and you're best in class. So the technical part of your, your role, I think, is key. I think there are five key parts of, or, or competencies that need to be developed. And I'm not saying you can develop those tomorrow, but um, passion and drive. And again, this is, this, these, these are my, my interpretation of things. Passion and drive, any executive that is going to work in a retail organisation needs to have that. And when I talk about passion, I talk about pride in their tasks, but more importantly about urgency. If you do not have urgency today, you're going to get left behind. You need to stay abreast of things. So that drive and that passion is critical. You need to be tough-minded, you need to be resilient, and you need to accept the challenges and vigour because there's going to be plenty of them thrown at you. But more importantly, when I talk about passion and drive, I talk about being results oriented At the end of the day, if you're not able to measure what you're doing as an executive, you, you, you ain't going to make it. Strategic thinking is the second one that I think needs to be developed, and I don't think there's enough of it. Um, and how do I describe strategic thinking? Strategic thinking to me is someone who can analyse core issues and generate simple solutions. That's how I interpret strategic thinking. But also, more importantly, a second component of that is to create um, solutions for long-standing problems. There's lots of organisations you go to and say, we can't do this, this has always been a challenge, it's always been a challenge. If you can take that challenge and turn it into a solution, you have become a, you've become a strategist, and that's important. And with technology now, I think we have that ability. Relationship building. At the end of the day, the technology guys in the bunker down the bottom of the building, bottom left-hand corner, working away on their, on their technology, is gone. If you want to become a true... Um, I guess executive, you need to start to build relationships across the organisation. As I said, the organisation is starting to encroach on your space. My executives, people in the organisation are starting to become more sound, have more capability around technology, they understand some of the concepts. So you need to be able to go back and communicate with them. So that's where relationship building, I think, is absolutely critical. Leading change, you need to be open to change, goes without say. And I think generally the IT guys are, because you've been in this this, con this continuous pace of change and the processes that, 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 that are associated, but you need to encourage that boundary breaking. So keep pushing the boundaries, using technology, but then using your thinking to push those boundaries. And, uh, and the last part about leading change is the ability to, to develop well thought out, non-manipulative influencing strategies. There's nothing more than an executive sitting in his room who thinks he knows what he's talking about, and the IT guy comes in and says, I think you should do this. Guess what? Barrier number one, you need to be able to work out, from your perspective, how to influence that change across the organisation. And lastly, when I've, and I've said it a couple of times today, and that's innovation. Create new ideas um, and create new options with existing capability. And, and effectively brainstorm. You know, you don't have to be innovative yourself. It's the ability to brainstorm. So get all the key people in the room and take those ideas and that starts to lead to different thinking across your, your business. And last but not least, you know, you need to question the status quo. 
So as a CIO, start to question the status quo around the business. You know, you've got all this information, start to use it effectively. So, um, I honestly believe that if the IT world can start to develop some of these capabilities, and I'll call them leadership capabilities, I think those stats I spoke about at the beginning of the presentation, I think those numbers could look quite different. And from a pumpkin patch perspective, I honestly believe that we're in that space, and I'm excited about it, my IT team is, and I want to just uh, uh, give credit to, to my CIO, who is currently on extended sick leave. She's been away for three months, and she'll probably be away for another three to six months, and my IT team have not missed a beat. They've continued to execute all the strategies that we as a team and an executive team have followed up on, and that is because she made sure that her team were part of all the different strategies and the different processes and the different departments across the organisation. So, um, an absolute credit to Zarina. Uh, 